Auction Hall. My wife spent a fortune to buy a vase and gifted it to her childhood sweetheart. After their passionate kiss, she gave me a contemptuous glance. I immediately bought the most expensive pink diamond necklace in the room and claimed I was giving it to my true love. Then I placed the necklace around my secretary's neck. But later, my wife regretted it and said her true love was me. But it was too late. Chapter 1. At the auction, Joanna Sue flamboyantly bid on a vase and immediately handed it to her childhood sweetheart, Colin. Seizing the opportunity, a reporter asked her if the vase was worth the high price she paid. Joanna gazed affectionately at Colin and said that since he liked it, no price was too high. Amidst the crowd's teasing, Colin lifted Joanna's chin and kissed her. When the kiss ended, Joanna looked coyly at him. Our eyes met, and she gave me a contemptuous glance before looking away. The auction continued with various ceramics and jewelry on display, until a pink diamond necklace appeared on the stage, and the entire room fell silent. This necklace, certified flawless by the European Gemological Institute, is a rarity in the world. Due to its high starting price, few people bid on it. In the end, I won the necklace with the highest bid of the night. When I received the necklace, a reporter asked me who I intended to give it to. I replied, to my true love. Our eyes met again unintentionally. She gave me a playful smile, looking confident. Then, I turned and placed the necklace around Charlotte's neck. Charlotte's ears slowly turned red. Her eyes, misty with emotion, looked at me like a cute little rabbit. After the auction, I wrapped my arm around Charlotte's waist and headed out. I could feel a pair of eyes staring daggers at me from behind, but I didn't look back. Chapter 2 That night, a friend opened a bar, and I brought Charlotte to support the event. As fate would have it, we ran into Joanna and Colin again. Since we all belonged to the same circle, we ended up sharing a booth. However, no one knew that Joanna and I were married. We've been married for three years, but besides our parents, no one else knew. A friend jokingly asked Joanna and Colin if they would secretly tie the knot since they were always together. Joanna glanced at me as if by accident. Seeing that I had no reaction, she tightened her grip on Colin's hand and said they were truly in love and would never elope in secret. Colin raised an eyebrow at that, staring straight at me, a sneer playing on his lips, as if he was the victor. I've seen that expression before, but this time, I felt nothing. Indeed, time can fade everything. Those heart-wrenching nights, the days of drinking and despair, are long gone. I scoffed and looked away. Now, whoever Joanna is with, it has nothing to do with me. Our friend suggested playing a game, truth or dare. When it was Charlotte's turn, Joanna asked a tricky and mean-spirited question. I was about to stop her, but Charlotte gently squeezed my hand to calm me down. I knew she didn't want to ruin the mood, so I stayed silent. Charlotte shyly said she would take the penalty and drink, but Joanna kept pushing, saying if she couldn't handle the game, she shouldn't have played. I knew she was deliberately making things difficult for Charlotte, but isn't this exactly what she wanted? I stood up, drank the penalty shot for Charlotte and then bid our friends goodbye before taking Charlotte away. Chapter 3 That night, when I got home and turned on the light, I saw Joanna sitting on the couch with a gloomy face. There was an unfinished bottle of red wine on the coffee table in front of her. I didn't want to deal with her, so I walked straight into my study, but she called out to me from behind, with a tone that made it clear she was ready for a confrontation. Augustine, have you forgotten that you're a married man? I couldn't help but find it amusing. What right did she have to question me? I turned around. Frowning at her, Joanna, you're the one who said we should do our own thing. Are you regretting it now? Regret, Joanna sneered as she met my gaze. Don't flatter yourself, Augustine. I'm just being kind and reminding you not to be fooled and count money for others. These young girls these days have all kinds of tricks. Don't be deceived by their age. They're quite capable of manipulation. I was speechless, chuckling as I shook my head. You're not a young girl either, and you're quite the expert at deception. With that, I closed the door to my study, immediately. I heard the sound of glass shattering in the living room. It's always like this, whenever things don't go her way. She makes a huge scene, but I was only doing what she asked, living our own lives without interfering with each other. We are a couple in name only, waiting for her to resolve her family matters before getting divorced. Three years ago, Joanna and I got married under the arrangement of both our parents. But at that time, Joanna said she wasn't ready for marriage and wanted to keep it a secret for now. I didn't think much of it, assuming she just wasn't used to her new identity. After we got married, she was very clingy, coming home right after work every day. A young lady who had never lifted a finger to do housework even started cooking soup for me. She showered me with sweet words every day and was uninhibited in bed. I loved her deeply. Until our second wedding anniversary, I had prepared 999 red roses at home, hoping to surprise her. I even bought the villa on the hillside that she had always liked. But in the end, what I received was a video and a few photos. In the video, her eyes were hazy. Her voice seductive. The men above her asked who she loved most. 
and she said it was Colin, the conversation repeated over and over, and my heart shattered into a million pieces. Chapter 4 I knew the video and photos were sent by Colin. It was as if I suddenly woke up, realizing that all of this had been foreshadowed. She never let me touch her phone. She had a locked diary in her study, and she traveled to the UK for business every month. Colin was in the UK, and I had always known that, but I chose to trust Joanna. Yet she had been deceiving me all along. It wasn't until the 999 roses had withered, their petals fallen, that Joanna finally returned. I confronted her with the video. She didn't feel guilty when she saw it. Instead, she seemed relieved to be found out. I completely lost my mind, turning into someone else entirely. I went from accusing her to begging her, from calmly discussing things with her to screaming at her in hysteria. I tried everything and exhausted all my strength. In the end, all I got was Joanna's indifferent back as she walked away, saying, once I've sorted out my family's affairs, we'll get divorced. At the time, her grandfather was ill and recovering at home. The old man, who had always been decisive and strong, had stepped down from the company, leading to some internal strife. Joanna's father was far less capable than her grandfather, but because of my marriage to Joanna Sue, he had more confidence to fight the other shareholders for power so she couldn't divorce me, whether for the sake of her grandfather or for the benefit of the family. At that time, my heart was full of resentment and I wanted to tell everyone that the Bai family would no longer provide financial support to the Sioux family, making Joanna regret it. But I couldn't do that. The old man's health couldn't handle the shock. Sue's grandfather and mine were comrades in arms. When they were young, he injured his left leg while saving my grandfather. Even though he had the means to seek treatment from top doctors worldwide, he still walked with a limp. The old man was a benefactor to our family, and I couldn't break his heart. I took a deep breath, trying not to dwell on these troubling thoughts. Looking up, I saw a photo of Charlotte on my desk. The young girl was smiling brightly. Just looking at her made me feel better. Chapter 5 I met Charlotte at a friend's wedding. I arrived a bit late and didn't want to interrupt the newlywed speech, so I took a seat near the entrance. Coincidentally, this table was empty. Just as I sat down, a young woman hurriedly sat beside me. We exchanged glances, and she sheepishly smiled, saying the venue was a bit confusing, and it had taken her a while to find it. There were several weddings being held here today so it wasn't easy to locate the right one. As it happened, we were the only two people at the table. When the food was served, I didn't have much of an appetite, but she ate with enthusiasm. While eating, she kindly encouraged me to eat too, pointing out which dishes were delicious and which were too salty. When the newlyweds came to toast, her face suddenly turned pale, and she blurted out, isn't this Lou's wedding? Seeing the shocked expressions on my face and the newlyweds, she realized she had walked into the wrong wedding. Everyone laughed it off but she was visibly shaking. She pulled out 500 yuan from her wallet and asked me to help her give it as a gift to the newlyweds. I chuckled and reassured her that it wasn't necessary, but she looked utterly defeated and said she had eaten so much of their food. Finally, she found a red envelope and placed the money inside. I reminded her to write her name on it. That's when I learned her name was Charlotte. At the time, I didn't think much of it, just that she was incredibly adorable. When I retold the story to the bride and groom, they couldn't stop laughing. A year later, I met Charlotte again when she graduated and came to my company for an interview. She was interviewing for the position of assistant to the CEO's secretary, in other words, my secretary's assistant. I happened to be passing by, and we recognized each other instantly. She greeted me warmly, and I sat down beside her. She thought I was there for an interview as well. I asked her why she was applying for the position. She said it was to fulfill her life's purpose. I laughed and told her to be honest. She giggled and admitted it was because of the high salary and good benefits. She then asked why I was there for the interview, but before I could answer, the interviewer called her name. It wasn't until the final interview that she saw me sitting in the center of the room, looking completely stunned. The HR manager asked her why she was applying for the position. She glanced at me uneasily, then firmly and seriously said it was to fulfill her life's purpose. Her expression was so earnest, like she was applying to join a political party, but her bright red face betrayed her nervousness. I clenched my fists tightly to stop myself from laughing. At that time, I had just confirmed Joanna's infidelity and hadn't laughed so genuinely in a long time. Chapter 6 I did hate Joanna at one point, but now I feel nothing. I knew about her and Colin before we got married. Joanna and Colin's families were neighbors, but compared to Joanna's prestigious Sioux family background, Colin was hardly worth mentioning. He was just the illegitimate son of the Zhao family. It wasn't until junior high that Mr. Zhao brought him back into the family, but Colin had two older brothers and a younger sister all born to Mr. Zhao's legitimate wife, so, it was difficult for him to make a name for himself in this circle, but Colin was smart, he knew the Su family and the Zhao family were evenly matched, as long as he could win over Joanna, his position in the Zhao family would be secure, from then on, 
He got close to Joanna, but sometimes he kept a bit of distance. During high school, he outwardly rejected other girls who showed interest in him, but where Joanna couldn't see, he flirted just enough to keep other girls interested. So, despite his cold demeanor, girls kept chasing after him, never letting up. Although Colin never dated any other girls, he also never confessed his feelings to Joanna. All of this was unacceptable to Joanna, who had never faced rejection. She had grown up being pursued and adored by everyone. It wasn't until college that the two of them finally got together. Most of what I knew about this came from friends. They thought Colin had ulterior motives, but Joanna was a hopeless romantic, beyond saving. I heard that they later broke up because of incompatible personalities, both too proud to compromise. Neither wanted to back down. And so, heartbroken, Colin left for abroad. Later, they rekindled their relationship, staying in touch on and off. Some people in our circle knew about it, and if I had cared to investigate, I would have found out much sooner. But I was too trusting of her during our early marriage. Or maybe I just didn't want to think of her as someone so unworthy. After I received the video of Joanna and Colin, I had someone investigate. And that's when I learned the truth. Colin had left the country because his biological mother had introduced him to a socialite far more advantageous than Joanna. The socialite insisted they go abroad together. So he dumped Joanna. But he left himself a way back. Making it seem like Joanna still had a place in his heart. It was obvious that his contact with Joanna was just preparation for coming back to fight for his inheritance. I remember when I told Joanna everything, trying to show her Colin's true nature. Her expression went from indifference to mockery. She said she never imagined I could be so despicable as to slander Colin. That look in her eyes, I'll never forget it. But it was that very look that snapped me back to reality. Chapter 7 The next day, Charlotte noticed my dark circles and scolded me gently for not getting enough rest. Like a magician, she pulled out a thermos, poured me a bowl of chicken soup, and said I needed to replenish my strength. If Joanna was the one who left me battered and bruised, then Charlotte was my medicine. She filled the void in my broken soul, embracing my shattered body. I remember the day Charlotte confessed to me. Her eyes were full of warmth and honesty. I could feel her pure love, but I couldn't accept it because I didn't deserve it. I told Charlotte everything, the hidden marriage, Joanna's infidelity, and my plans for divorce. After hearing everything, Charlotte thought for a moment. Then she frowned and asked if the real reason I wasn't getting a divorce was because I was worried about Grandpa Sue's health. I firmly said yes. She asked if I still loved Joanna. I answered with even more conviction that I didn't. In truth, it wasn't just that I didn't love her anymore, I despised her. Since I found out about Joanna's affair, I hadn't touched her. I found her repulsive. After hearing this, Charlotte let out a long sigh of relief. She muttered, that's good, that's good. Then she looked up at me with sincere eyes and said, I can wait for you, I'm still young. From that moment on, we often had meals together, went to the movies, hiked. We stayed in a state that was more than friends but not quite lovers. I wanted to be with her wholeheartedly, without any baggage. I think she understood that about me. On the day of the auction, it was the first time I introduced Charlotte in front of others. My true love. It wasn't because I was provoked by Joanna and Colin's kiss. It was because I genuinely wanted to be with Charlotte. I wanted to give her everything beautiful in this world. Buying that pink diamond necklace wasn't an impulsive decision. I knew Charlotte liked pink diamonds. Joanna mocked me, saying Charlotte was just a gold digger who was after my money. I didn't bother arguing with her. There's no point explaining Summer to a cicada. She even pretended to kindly remind me that a gold digger wouldn't fit in with high society. That she was beneath me and only good for a fling. But what she didn't know was that Charlotte came from a good family. Just very low-key. Charlotte's father is a well-known traditional Chinese medicine doctor. Her mother is a university professor. Charlotte herself is exceptional. She's diligent and responsible at work, with top-notch professional skills. She's beautiful, sweet, and kind. She grew up surrounded by love, with a heart full of sunshine, always willing to share her light with others. Chapter 8 On the weekend, I went to the old house to visit Grandpa Sue. Grandpa Sue has always been very fond of me, and I visit him whenever I can. Even though he's elderly and has a weak heart, his eyes are still sharp, as if they can see through everything. I played chess with him and talked about work. He would share some internet jokes with me, claiming to be a master surfer of the web. During dinner, Grandpa Sue was the same as always, constantly putting food on my plate. He said that a man needs a strong body to eliminate all demons and monsters. I smiled and agreed, then made sure to eat everything he served me. As I was about to leave, Grandpa Sue patted my shoulder, his tone gentle, you rascal, you finally have a smile on your face again. I froze for a moment, then realized what he meant. My nose tingled, and my eyes started to well up. Joanna and that useless Zhao boy did you wrong. You don't have to worry about me. These old bones of mine are still sturdy. Divorce her. You can't waste your whole life on them. You don't need to care about what her parents think. 
Grandpa Su's words were like a weight lifted off my shoulders. When I got married, Grandpa Su had already warned me that Joanna's parents didn't raise her well and that I shouldn't indulge her blindly. I hadn't completely fallen out with Joanna yet because I didn't want Grandpa Su to worry. Since the night Joanna and I fought at the bar, she hasn't come home. I knew she was living with Colin. In fact, ever since we had that confrontation, she had hardly spent a night at home. This is also why I haven't moved out. Chapter 9 A month later, it was Joanna's father's birthday. Out of courtesy, I still brought a gift and went to their house. I handed the prepared gift to Mr. Sue and chatted with him for a while. Although Joanna and I hadn't been in contact during this time, news about her and Colin kept finding its way to me. Like a daily report, they were making headlines everywhere. Socialite Joanna and Mr. Zhao passionately kiss on the street. Joanna spends millions on a luxury home just to see Colin smile. All kinds of headlines made Joanna look like a joke. There were even some explicit photos, although her face was blurred. Anyone who knew her could tell it was Joanna. Mr. and Mrs. Sue were aware of all this, and they were deeply embarrassed when facing me. They blamed themselves, saying it was their fault for not raising their daughter properly, but they still tried to persuade me to forgive Joanna. I didn't say anything, just quietly changed the subject. At that moment, Joanna came home. The moment she saw me, she threw her bag at me with full force. Before I could say anything, she started cursing me, Augustine, I really underestimated you. How could you do something so shameless? Stabbing me in the back, are you even a man? Joanna was convinced that I was behind all the negative reports about her, including the explicit photos. She believed it was all my way of getting revenge on her. Mr. Sue was furious and told her to shut up, insisting that I was a man of integrity and would never do something so underhanded. Even Mrs. Sue tried to calm her down, saying that someone else must have been behind it. But Joanna seemed to have lost all reason, glaring at me with pure hatred. In the end, Mr. Sue, angry beyond measure, called her shameless. She argued that there was nothing wrong with pursuing love. Mr. Sue retorted that Colin was no good and that she should cut ties with him before their father-daughter relationship was completely severed. But she was convinced that I had been badmouthing Colin to the Sue family. She pointed at me and unleashed another barrage of insults, calling me petty and deceitful. Heaven knows. I hadn't even mentioned them once. In the end, Mr. Sue was so angry that he slapped her. Joanna grabbed her bag and stormed out. She didn't care about Mr. and Mrs. Sue's feelings at all. I quickly followed her out and called after her. She raised an eyebrow at me. What? Are you trying to reconcile? I smiled. She was still so arrogant. I took the divorce papers from my car and handed them to her. Her expression shifted from shock to anger as she saw them. She glared at me with wide eyes. Augustine, are you out of your mind? Seeing that I didn't react, her expression changed again. Are you serious? You can't really be thinking of marrying that little girl, can you? I sighed, not wanting to waste any more words. Reluctantly. I said, take a look at the contents of the agreement. If you have any issues, you can talk to me or contact my lawyer directly. Ignoring her hysterical insults behind me, I got in my car and drove home. Chapter 10 That night, I was half asleep when I felt a slight dip on one side of the bed. I was still groggy, unsure if it was a dream or reality. I felt a warm body press against me from behind, holding me tightly. Gus, Joanna called my name, trying to sound seductive, just as she was about to slip her hand into my pajama shirt. I pushed her away forcefully and rolled out of bed. I turned on the light and saw Joanna lying on the bed. She was wearing something I couldn't even describe as pajamas, it was more like a few scraps of fabric held together by strings. The material was so scant that it didn't even cover as much as a handkerchief. She looked at me, thinking she was being seductive. We haven't been together for a long time, don't you miss me? As she spoke, she provocatively exposed her leg. I closed my eyes and let out a deep sigh. She looked exactly like she did in the video Colin sent me. I felt a wave of nausea, a strong urge to vomit. Gus, can that little girl satisfy you? What does she even know? I couldn't understand how this woman could be so shameless. Get out, I said coldly. She tried to say something else, but I cut her off sternly. Get out of here. Her expression changed instantly. You really don't know when to take what's offered, do you? You'll regret this. I did regret it, regretted not locking the bedroom door before going to sleep. Joanna stormed downstairs and shattered every dish she could find. The TV the fridge, nothing was spared, she was panting with rage, sitting on the couch, glaring at me, I looked at her with indifference, sign the divorce papers as soon as possible, seeing that she didn't leave, I decided I didn't want to argue with her anymore, I took a quick look around, there was nothing important to take, all my important documents were kept at my parents' old house, I only took Charlotte's photo from my study and left the villa, I looked up at the sky, which was beginning to show the first light of dawn, finally, the night was over, chapter 11, when I arrived at Charlotte's place with breakfast, she was still half asleep. She looked like a little puppy that had just been woken up. 
her hair all fluffed up. When she saw it was me, she immediately jumped into my arms, hugging me tightly. What are you doing here? Before I could answer, she exclaimed, you're burning up. It turned out I had a fever. No wonder I'd felt like my body was weighed down with lead, drifting in and out of consciousness all day. Even though the fever eventually broke, my whole body still ached. Charlotte kept gently massaging me, trying to ease the pain, but I felt bad for making my little princess work so hard. I drifted in and out of sleep, my awareness fading in and out. Every time I opened my eyes, Charlotte was there by my side. She was either massaging my legs, my shoulders, or my temples. I told her to take a break, but she said she wasn't tired. She even joked that this should count as overtime and that she deserved overtime pay. I told her to stay away from me, afraid she might catch my fever. She proudly declared that she was a fairy and fairies don't get sick. If I wasn't so weak at that moment, I would have pulled her into my arms and pinched her cheeks. I thought back to when I first got married, and Joanna had an appendectomy. I took care of her day and night. She constantly complained about the pain and was in a terrible mood. She lashed out at everyone around her, doctors, nurses, and, of course, me. No matter how I tried to comfort her, nothing worked. I finally got her through recovery, only to fall ill myself. When it rains, it pours. Joanna was so engrossed in her phone as she was walking downstairs that she almost tripped. I rushed to catch her and ended up falling down the stairs myself, fracturing my leg. She said she didn't know how to take care of people and left my care entirely to the maid and nurse. I understood, she was a spoiled young lady who had no idea how to care for someone, but I didn't expect her to not visit me at the hospital for days. I called her, but she didn't answer. I texted her, but she didn't reply. A week later, she finally messaged me back, saying she was abroad for an important project. She didn't even ask how my injury was. After all, I was in the hospital because of her. Later, I found out she had gone to see Colin. Colin had alcohol poisoning, and she was worried about him. She flew abroad to take care of him personally. Colin even posted about it on social media. The caption read, Only when you're sick do you know who truly loves you. The accompanying photo was of two hands clasped tightly together. With just one glance, I recognized one of the hands as Joanna's. She had a letter C tattooed on her ring finger. Colin C. Chapter 12. After three days without hearing from Joanna, I had to get my lawyer to contact her. If she continued to refuse to sign the papers, I would have no choice but to file a lawsuit. After all, I had a pile of evidence of her infidelity. She was furious and called me, spewing a barrage of insults, but I didn't care at all. As long as she agreed to the divorce, I was willing to give her more money. I had no choice but to provoke her. I asked if she refused to divorce me because Colin didn't want to marry her. That must have struck a nerve. This time, she agreed to the divorce and signed the papers. There was a mandatory one-month cooling-off period. Charlotte placed a countdown board in my office, saying that in 30 days, I would be free. On the day I got the divorce certificate, I finally felt at ease. The suffocating weight I had been carrying was gone. As I walked out of the civil affairs office, I saw Colin waiting outside for Joanna. When he saw me, he deliberately took off his sunglasses and waved at me. He had that smirk on his face, so smug, scoundrel. I couldn't understand what Joanna saw in him. Now that I was a free man, I took Charlotte on a trip. We went to an island and spent half a month there before returning to the country. My friends filled me in on the latest gossip in our circle. Apparently, Colin's father had distributed the family assets to Colin's two brothers. Those two brothers were not easy to deal with. Colin's mother was the mistress who had broken up their parents' marriage. When their mother found out about the affair, she was so angry that she ended up in the hospital and even contemplated suicide. She almost divorced Mr. Zhao. So when it came to Colin, the illegitimate child, his father's legitimate family never intended to give him a share of the inheritance. Every little scheme and trick Colin tried was quickly thwarted by his brothers. Seeing that he had no hope of getting any money, Colin set his sights on the Sioux family's assets. During the two weeks I was away, Joanna and Colin got married. Joanna made a big show of it on social media. She also announced that they would hold a wedding ceremony in a month. I deleted them both, so I didn't see any of their posts. But my friends, who love gossip, kept me updated. They all complained about Colin's character and confirmed that Joanna was truly a hopeless romantic. Chapter 13. Colin certainly knew how to manipulate Joanna. She cried and made a scene at home for several days, trying to get Colin into her family's company. In the end, Mr. and Mrs. Sue had no choice but to agree. I heard they even gave Colin a position in an important department. That's when I received the wedding invitation from Joanna and Colin. From the invitation alone, I could tell how much effort Joanna had put into their wedding. I didn't want to go. It seemed pointless, but my parents urged me to attend, reminding me of the long-standing relationship between our families. So, I decided to go, bringing Charlotte with me. Colin's marriage to Joanna did indeed elevate his status within the Zhao family. 
The Zhao family and the Su family had some business collaborations as well. Colin's father and his stepmother even attended the wedding. When the wedding began, the bride and groom exchanged heartfelt vows. Listening to their love story almost made me laugh. The wedding host then invited everyone to watch the big screen. It showed their wedding photos and some old pictures. Suddenly, the screen changed. It began showing videos of Colin fooling around with other women. It was utterly disgusting. And it wasn't just one woman. There were several. Some of whom I recognized as recently famous internet celebrities. The most recent video was dated just two days ago. Charlotte's eyes widened in shock. Her face turned red all the way down to her neck. I quickly covered her eyes. Don't watch this. It's not for you. What followed was Joanna's screams and curses. Turning the entire wedding into chaos. I hurriedly took Charlotte out of the venue. That evening. Many friends who attended the wedding shared the aftermath in our group chat. It turned out that after we left. The video on the big screen kept playing. They couldn't turn it off. It just kept running until the end. The highlight was a segment where Colin talked about me. He was speaking with a man in a baseball cap. Saying that Joanna was stupid and easy to fool. Colin handed the man a card. Instructing him to leak the story about him and Joanna. Including a few photos. These were the very photos that caused a scandal. Showing Joanna in compromising positions. The men expressed concern that Joanna might trace it back to him. Given the Sioux family's influence. Colin confidently assured him that Joanna wasn't smart enough for that. He said that as long as he subtly guided her, Joanna would suspect me as the mastermind. He even complained that if it weren't for the Sioux family's assets, he wouldn't bother with her at all. After that, everyone at the wedding was asked to leave by the Sioux family. After all, it wasn't something they wanted to publicize. Honestly, when the reporters first exposed Joanna and Colin's affair, I had already suspected it was Colin's doing. Colin wanted to use public opinion to force Joanna and me apart. He knew that the rumors would reach both of our parents, and no one could continue to turn a blind eye, even if only to save face. I couldn't just sit back and do nothing, but I didn't feel the need to explain myself. Chapter 14 I saw Joanna again about half a month later. She was waiting for me in my company's parking lot. When I saw her, it felt like a lifetime had passed since we last met. She stood next to my car, refusing to leave. She tried to get into the car, but I wouldn't let her, so she clung tightly to the side mirror. Her eyes red and teary as she looked at me. Why did you sell our marital home? She asked. Her voice choked with emotion. I was speechless. That house was something I bought before we got married. But just the thought of her living there made me uncomfortable. So I sold it. I looked at her in confusion. What does it have to do with you? As soon as I said that, tears started streaming down her face. But I felt nothing. She said she had divorced Colin and had completely cut ties with him. She kept repeating that she knew she was wrong. That she regretted everything. She asked if I could give her another chance. She claimed that she had been deceived by Colin. She said she had thought our marriage was just a business arrangement. But she had realized that she had fallen in love with me long ago. Colin had also lied to her. Telling her that I was the one who leaked her explicit photos. Causing her to misunderstand me. She said she agreed to the divorce out of anger. She said she now realized that I was the only one who truly cared for her. I laughed. Was there something wrong with her mind? We stood there for 10 minutes. But she still refused to leave. I got out of the car. And her eyes lit up thinking I had softened. Before she could say anything, I quickly ran to my other car, and before she could catch up, I sped away. In the rearview mirror, I could still see her staring in the direction of my car. After this, I thought she would give up, but to my surprise, she went to my parents' house. She started helping the maid with the chores every day, no longer carrying that arrogant attitude she once had. Eventually, she even knelt on the ground and refused to get up, begging my parents and me for forgiveness. Chapter 15 My parents had no choice but to call me. My mom, seeing how much weight Joanna had lost, began to feel sorry for her. My dad, on the other hand, was not pleased. He told my mom that she was too soft-hearted, and he firmly believed that people's true nature never changes. I told my parents directly that I had a girlfriend, and our relationship was very stable. We were even planning to get married. Only then did my mom give up on the idea of reconciliation. What I didn't expect was that Joanna would go as far as to slit her wrists to see me. Mrs. Sue called me begging me to visit her and talk some sense into her. When Grandpa Sue found out, he scolded Mrs. Sue, saying that Joanna was just reaping what she had sown. He told me not to go see her and to let her reflect on her own actions. Charlotte urged me to visit Joanna, to put an end to things once and for all. She said I should make it clear. So, I went to the hospital. When Joanna saw me, the tears started flowing again. She tried to hold my hand, but I refused. Augustine, can't you give me just one more chance? This time. I'll stay by your side. Take care of you. Okay. Can't you at least give me a chance to pursue you? After saying that, she broke down, sobbing uncontrollably. Joanna, although we didn't have a strong emotional foundation before we got married, 
I was completely devoted to you after we tied the knot. She seemed to see a glimmer of hope and grabbed the hem of my shirt. Then we can build that foundation now. I interrupted her. I'm in love with someone now. I love her. And I will love her with all my heart. She deserves it. If it weren't for her urging me, I wouldn't have come to see you. She's very kind. She hopes that after seeing me, you can move on and live well. As I said that, I thought of Charlotte's little encouraging face when she sent me off. And I couldn't help but smile. Then I looked up and saw Joanna's eyes. They were filled with sadness, regret, and finally, emptiness. She murmured. She really is better than me. The hand that had been gripping my shirt slowly let go. As I left the hospital, the sun was shining brightly outside. Chapter 16. As soon as I looked up, I saw Charlotte waiting for me by the fountain not far away. Why did you come here? Didn't you say you'd wait for me at home? I asked. Pleasantly surprised. She looked at me with a proud little pout. I ate too much for breakfast. So I came here to walk it off. I couldn't bear to poke holes in her cute little excuse. Walking off a meal by coming 10 kilometers from home. Only she could come up with such an adorable reason. Two months flew by in the blink of an eye. I proposed to Charlotte. After dinner, we were taking a walk hand in hand. Suddenly, people around us started exclaiming and pointing across the street. On the large screens of the malls opposite us, a message appeared, surrounded by hearts. Charlotte, marry me. Charlotte stared at the screens, wide-eyed and speechless. At that moment, I got down on one knee and pulled out the ring I had prepared. Charlotte, will you marry me? Tears started falling from her eyes. One by one, as she helped me up, she said, yes, I looked down, and she looked up, our eyes meeting. All we could see in each other's eyes was warmth and tenderness. Chapter 17. We set our wedding date for six months later. The meeting between our parents went very smoothly. Charlotte's parents liked me a lot, showering me with praise. My parents, in turn, were even more attentive to Charlotte than they were to me. My mom used to be a French teacher, and she always tried to force me to learn French but I wasn't interested at all. Just hearing French gave me a headache. But Charlotte knows French. It was just an elective course she took in college, but she learned it quite well. Now, she and my mom chat in French all the time, sharing secrets and laughing non-stop. My dad and I are left completely in the dark. I didn't expect my dad and her dad to both enjoy fishing. These two old men had both been scolded by their wives for being too obsessed with fishing, and now they had found companions. The two mothers also became good friends, taking yoga and photography classes together. Charlotte and I were more than happy with the situation. Chapter 18. At a friend's gathering, someone mentioned Colin. They said he was in a really bad spot now. Mr. Zhao was ashamed of him and refused to acknowledge him. Colin was born because his biological mother had him secretly, and Mr. Zhao only found out later. Colin's biological mother then used various methods to force Mr. Zhao to bring Colin back into the family. Colin's stepmother and brothers didn't do anything to him because they didn't care about him. They treated him like a pet, something to keep around but not to worry about. They could keep an eye on him to prevent him from causing any trouble. But now, after the video at the wedding, Colin had completely embarrassed the Zhao family. He had also angered the Su family, who would have loved nothing more than to throw him into the sea to feed the sharks. Everyone at the gathering wondered who was responsible for exposing the video at the wedding. They said it was incredibly satisfying. I knew who it was, Colin's two half-brothers. They had approached me for a partnership, but I declined. Even for the sake of Grandpa Su, I couldn't allow the Su family to be humiliated like that. I heard that recently Colin had been hanging around the circle of wealthy women. He was using flattery and charm to survive. It seems he latched onto a married older woman. The woman's family had money, but her husband wasn't someone to be trifled with. When her husband found out about the affair, he had Colin's manhood destroyed. Now, Colin is the laughingstock of the entire circle. Chapter 19. Before the wedding, I accompanied Charlotte to try on wedding dresses. She pouted and said that trying on wedding dresses was exhausting. She tried on one dress after another. She kept asking me which one looked the best, which one had the most grace, which one was the most unique. I smiled and answered her every question. She held up the hem of her dress and said she was going to try on another one. As she walked away, she muttered that she had to choose carefully because it was the most important day of her life. But what I wanted to say was, Charlotte, my true love, it doesn't matter which wedding dress you choose as long as you're the bride, it'll be perfect.